Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers DUI laws, filming the police, and excessive force, and is brought to us by Shields of Shame's channel and Ragamonkey's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. This will be another double feature episode, so be sure to stick around for our coverage of both of today's interactions. On April 21st, 2024, Officer Joey Lamberth of the City of Wren's Police Department in Georgia responded responded to a call regarding a driver who was swerving, quote-unquote, all over the roadway. He found the driver and pulled him over after allegedly seeing him swerve several times. The interaction that followed was captured on body camera, with Officer Quincy Cannon and Sergeant Brown of the Wrens PD later joining him at the stop. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. Hey, we got a call about you all over the roadway, then I get behind you and you was swerving a little bit. No, I found him behind that trailer right there. You found him behind that trailer right there? Yeah. Okay, you you, like you come over, you come over a few times. Do you got your driver's license on it? Have you been drinking today? No, I've been doing, nope, I've been doing tobacco today. Chewing tobacco, okay. Yeah. Where y'all headed to? Fifth Square. You drop your truck off? Where, I mean, where's that? Uh, any room right here. Is this your car or his car? No, his, his car. This one is? Yeah. Okay. It's a mom, bro. All right. So. We're sitting, drank a beer, but he's in my room. You said you needed out the sensor? The out the sensor? Yeah. Yeah. Joe, I'm finna go home. So who's doing the uh, DUI? Who's doing the DUI? One of y'all. Gotta make it up. Okay. Well, who stopped the car? Yes, sir. Are you Joey did. Joey did? Yeah. Oh. Cause y'all asked for an alcohol sensor. I'm like, I thought y'all already did everything, or testing and stuff. Oh. 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 O
No, I'm saying like. No, you did with it. You got it. If it'll help what I could do, I'm taking that to Lord. Come on. I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Come on. Go ahead, check. So what was unsafe about him? Friends, 102 Central. I'm in service. Turn over to whoever. Hey, how you doing? Hey, sir. My name is Officer Ken. I work for Rens Police Department. What happened today? I don't know. I got pulled over. You got pulled over? Okay. By him? I don't know. Okay. By him? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. How much you had to drink that? I had one bit of that. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Now I know my blood pressure is up. Okay. Well, what we okay. want to do is we uh, just want to check it. Hold on. All right, it's your choice. Do you want to blow on this? Uh, well, I, well, I got, I got to see. I, right now, I mean, you're looking functional to me. It's not, it's not like that. I, I don't see nothing. I didn't even stop you. Like this is, this is completely. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't but stop. Saying, I, I didn't stop you. But you I'm know, saying, they saying I will swerving all over the road. Look, 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 bottom line is we just want you to blow in this. That way we can see if you can, uh, are able to drive. The thing brown is I'm, I'm not going to that. Okay, so and that's I'm his not, choice. I'm not, I would okay. swerve it. Well, I don't know who called y'all. I'll follow him to the shop, take his truck to the shop. Hey, sorry, Brown. That's his choice. I got to prove that he's less safe. I can't. It's against, I, I, I violate his Fifth Amendment right. No, he was proved less safe when he was crossing that and, line. And now I'm crossing what line? I did not. He doesn't want to blow on it. That's his, that's his choice. Officer Cannon argues that if he were to ask the driver to take a breath test, he would violate his Fifth Amendment rights. The Supreme Court has repeatedly held that the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination only applies to compelled so-called testimonial or communicative evidence. As the Supreme Court explained in the 1990 case of Pennsylvania v. Muniz, quote, The self-incrimination clause of the Fifth Amendment provides that no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself. Although the text does not delineate the ways in which a person might be made a witness against himself, we have long held that the privilege does not protect a suspect from being compelled by the state to produce real or physical evidence. Rather, the privilege protects an accused only from being compelled to testify against himself, or otherwise provide the state with evidence of a testimonial or communicative nature. Applying these principles, the court concluded that the Fifth Amendment's protections did not apply to the use of a breathalyzer or to the admission of evidence regarding a driver's refusal to take a breathalyzer at trial. However, in the 2022 case of Ammons v. State, the Supreme Court of Georgia held that the Georgia Constitution's protection against self-incrimination, which is found in Article 1, Section 1, Paragraph 16 of the Georgia Constitution, does apply to preliminary breath tests using an ALCO sensor and field sobriety tests that require the cooperation of the suspect. In reaching this conclusion, the court noted that Georgia case law established that the provision, quote, applies to more than mere testimony. It also protects us from being forced to perform acts that generate incriminating evidence, and that because a preliminary ALCO sensor test require a driver, quote, to affirmatively blow into a device for a sustained period of time, and, now quoting again, the evidence generated by the test is plainly incriminating against a suspect who has consumed alcohol, the Georgia Constitution allows a suspect to refuse to consent to the preliminary breath test, and protects that suspect from having his refusal used against him at trial. Accordingly, while it is highly unlikely that a court would conclude that the Fifth Amendment applied in any way to the use of the breathalyzer, it is probable that a Georgia court would find that its constitutional privilege against compelled self-incrimination did apply to the breath test. Still, it is important to note that the provision only applies to compelled self-incrimination, meaning that Officer Cannon could not violate the Georgia Constitution by asking the driver to consensually submit to an ALCO sensor test. The Court of Appeals of Georgia determined in the 1998 case of State v. Stansbury that officers are authorized to request that an individual take a breath test based on reasonable suspicion of impaired driving. Here, it is probable that a court would find reasonable suspicion existed based on the driver swerving and his admission to drinking a beer. As such, despite Officer Cannon's objections, it is improbable that a court would conclude that a request that the driver submit to an ALCO sensor test was unlawful. I, I gotta visibly see what's like... When I make my DUI, I, I visibly see abnormal oh, behaviors.
We're not gonna hold court side road one. Okay. Two, we're not gonna argue with each other in front of people. Uh -huh. We're here to back one another up, okay? Okay, and Joey left. Okay, well I can't hear what Joey did. Now it's me and you here. Okay. So we're gonna do what's got to be done. Okay, okay? and what's Right that? now we're looking like complete idiots to them, okay? Okay. So 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 what do you want me to do? If he if you, Joey if Joey stopped, Joey don't wanna do nothing with it, that's fine. He don't wanna blow on that, that's fine. But he's not driving that car away from here. I can't Due be, to his driving. I can't be part of that because that's unlawful. Well, you go do what you're going to do. I'll take care of you. Okay. Oh, my God. This is... This is right. Okay. This is where Sir, we're here goes your ID. Based on yeah. his driving, we got a call that he was all over the road. Oh, this is the same shit. Hey, one beer. Yeah. Okay, sir. He admitted he's been drinking. Yes, sir. All right. The officer... That stopped him. Already said he wasn't gonna pursue no DUI with him. Yes, sir. Unlock him up. But what we want to do is check him and see if he was okay to drive. Yes, sir. But since he refused to let us check him, then um, I need somebody to drive that vehicle. But what I can do, I can let him get in with me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go right down to the Lord's and unload my truck. I'll come back and load this one up and take it back to box. Okay. Because I don't want him getting yes, hurt. Sir. And I don't even hurt nobody yes, else. Because I mean, because uh, he, I mean, he, he, he was doing me a favor. Because yeah. I mean, I don't have a vehicle at the time. Well, see, was... it could just be his blood pressure. Yes, sir. We don't know. Yes, sir. I'm okay. Understand. Well, like, it, like it I could said, be if it's sugar, okay. could be sugar out of whack. Yes, we sir. don't know. But yeah. I just don't want him getting hurt. Okay. Well, if it's okay, we'll just leave this here. Okay. I'm gonna run that truck down the lot. Okay. And we'll come back and load this one up, and I just drive both of them back. Well, I said I ain't telling you you got to do that. I'm just asking you. I would rather do that because I appreciate y'all for what y'all doing for me. Because I don't want him getting hurt. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. That's what we'll do. I'm gonna leave the truck right here, and we're gonna go on down there unload it. Okay. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Have a good day, sir. Yes, sir. There is little information known about this encounter, and it is unclear whether either Officer Lamberth or Officer Cannon faced any disciplinary action for their conduct during this encounter. However, according to the description on the original video, Officer Cannon has since been terminated from the Wrens Police Department, although I was unable to independently verify this information. It should be noted that before he was hired by the Wrens Police Department, Officer Cannon was a deputy with the Richmond County Sheriff's Office until he was arrested and charged with battery and violence violation of oath of office, along with two other deputies, for allegedly striking a handcuffed man who had been arrested for shooting another deputy in the face and stomach while in an elevator at the sheriff's office. Then Deputy Cannon was arrested on December 15th, 2022, bonded out, and placed on paid leave. And on December 20th, Officer Cannon was contacted by the chief deputy of the sheriff's department and told to resign or be terminated. Officer Cannon chose to resign. And on May 9th, 2023, a grand jury failed to indict him on any charges stemming from the incident. About a month and a half after the charges were dropped, the Wren City Police Department hired Officer Cannon on June 26, 2023. On April 2, 2024, Officer Cannon filed a racial discrimination lawsuit against the Richmond County Sheriff's Office. As of the date of writing this episode, the litigation is still pending. Overall, Officer Lamberth gets a C- for maintaining an unprofessional demeanor with his fellow officers, throwing what can only be described as a temper tantrum, and leaving the scene of a traffic stop he initiated. Now, while I do not believe that Officer Lamberth overstepped his legal authority at any point during the encounter, and a court would likely conclude that he had the reasonable suspicion necessary to request that the driver submit to an ALCO sensor test, it was completely unprofessional for him to drive off in the middle of the encounter, leaving officers who did not necessarily know all the relevant facts to handle the situation. Situation. Although I do understand why Officer Lamberth was frustrated with Officer Cannon, particularly given the fact that the use of a breathalyzer would likely be justified, he needed to control his temper and perform his job professionally despite his exasperation. Officer Cannon gets a C+. Plus. Because, although I strongly admire his willingness to stand up for citizen rights, I believe he was mistaken about the constitutionality of the breathalyzer request, and he behaved unprofessionally by speaking in a condescending nature to Officer Lamberth and arguing with his supervisor in front of a citizen. While there are certainly times when it would be appropriate for an officer to disagree with a supervisor, such as to prevent excessive force or another violation of citizen rights, in this instance, a court would likely find that the ALCO sensor request was not 
not unlawful, given the driver's admission to drinking a beer and his exhibited unsafe driving behavior. It is essential that when officers take a stand for citizen rights, they do so with an accurate understanding of the applicable legal and constitutional requirements. And situations like this, where Officer Cannon condemned his fellow officers for simply doing their jobs, well, that makes it harder for officers to be taken seriously when they express legitimate concerns. It also should be noted that this grade is based entirely on Officer Cannon's conduct during this encounter, and I have not taken any of the facts surrounding his prior arrest into consideration in assigning his grade here. The driver gets an A- minus for complying with officer requests, respectfully exercising his right to refuse the ALCO sensor test, and maintaining a relatively calm demeanor throughout the interaction, despite the confusion created by the officers. That being said, I have not taken into account the driver's potential alcohol consumption when assigning this grade, as he was not clearly intoxicated enough to make it obvious that he was violating the law, and I have no way of knowing how much he actually drank. While it is never a good idea to drive after consuming any alcohol, I will give the driver the benefit of the doubt that he only had consumed one beer. However, if there were proof that he was actually intoxicated at the time of this encounter, his grade would be much lower. Let's move on to the next interaction. On August 23, 2022, Officer Imani Davis of the Miami Police Department responded to an emergency situation involving an overdose near a store owned by the family of Matthew Gandor, who stepped out of the store and stood observing the scene with a friend. Mr. Gandor's friend began to film, and Officer Davis approached Mr. Gandor and his friend to question them about why he was filming. Mr. Gandor pulled out his own cell phone to attempt to film Officer Davis, and Officer Davis seized the phone from his hand and and physically prevented Mr. Gandor from retrieving it. The encounter was captured on body camera, although Officer Davis had his body camera muted during the first portion of the interaction. Yo! I'm on the Yo! No, 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 no. What? I'm not playing with you, kid. What did I just tell you? 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 Relax! Put him hands up. I told you how many times I put your hands behind your back. Yes, he did. I told you. He's resisting. I told you not to record. I'm talking to you. He put his hands on me. That, yes, he did. And you were standing right there. I'm standing, but Call my uncle. Call my uncle. Call my uncle. Get away from me. Go outside the gate. Call my uncle. No. Call my uncle. It's not, not right. Call Mr. my uncle. Get out of the streets. Sit up. You got ID on you? Call my uncle. Okay. Don't, you can't check you got... me. Hold on, hold on. Man, I'm bleeding. Look what you I did know. to me. Rescue's there. They're going to take care of you. Why'd you do that to me? I didn't touch you. You're going to jail now, too. You work in the store, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I told you they said you sell out the store. You specifically. Yo, call my uncle. 786. Call, call him. Call him. He's bleeding, man. I know. Rest gonna take. Back up, man. You want to go too? Right I, this back is up. This it's is, a crime scene. Is, back up. Yeah, but this is my back property. Back up. I know it's your property. Now back yes. up. I'm giving you a lot of order. Back out. Get up. Don't spit. You gonna give me a napkin? I'm not giving you nothing. If I rest, you clean you up. Me. Sit down. I told you don't touch me. I didn't touch you. You, you touched me. Sit man. down. You touched me. You still talking. Sit down. Can I get my other shoe? No. He can't touch you. you he can't come over here. Though. Rescue's gonna clean you up. I, just wanna, I have a question. Seriously. No, I'm not. I'm done talking to you. When I wanted to talk to you, you don't want to talk. Why was your body cam off? Why was my body cam? Yeah, it was, was on because it was recording. Why was it off? It was on. It was off. How was it off? You came and you asked that lady the other day for her social and you harassed her at the bus stop. Why you let her go? Let who go? Why you let her go? We talked. We didn't harass each other at the bus oh, stop. My lawyer. Still not you get a lawyer. Thank you. Stop talking. It's all recorded. Give me his license, Sam. His license. Give me his license. His license. He, he, I guess they gave they gave you everything. It was a wallet with the money. He gave you all that stuff, right? I have it in my car. Right. So I need his license. His wallet. You need his license for what? To ask me for what? I need his yeah. license. Okay, for you, what? He going to jail. I need his info. He went to jail for what? Yeah, resisting. For I told you. And he put his hands on me. Give me his jail. license. Officer Davis claims that Mr. Gandor is going to jail for quote-unquote resisting and quote-unquote 
putting his hands on Officer Davis. The body camera footage clearly shows that Mr. Gandor did not engage in any physical contact with Officer Davis, so it is highly unlikely that Mr. Gandor's arrest could be justified based on a potential battery charge. As for a charge of resisting, Section 843.02 of the Florida Statute states that, quote, whoever shall resist, obstruct, or oppose any officer in the lawful execution of any legal duty without offering or doing violence to the person of the officer shall be guilty of a misdemeanor of the first degree. It is unclear how exactly Officer Davis believed that Mr. Gandor, quote-unquote, resisted him in the execution of a legal duty, and my ability to analyze the situation is greatly limited by the fact that Officer Davis had his camera muted during the part of the encounter leading up to Mr. Gandor's arrest. Nonetheless, according to Mr. Gandor, Officer Davis never asked him to leave the scene or step away, and even if he did refuse to leave, as the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida determined in the 2020 case of Rabalco versus City of Coral Springs, quote, a person's refusal to leave the scene of a search or arrest, even while yelling, cursing, or criticizing, rises to the level of obstruction only if the person's physical presence was obstructing or impeding the officer in the performance of his duty. As such, it seems probable that a court would conclude that Mr. Gandor's conduct did not rise to the level of resisting. Did he do nothing? Nah. Now you, you still like this? I see what? I no, don't go over there. I don't have to answer nothing from you. He's going to jail for resisting already. I told you. And he put his hands on me. No, no, no. He put his hands on me. I'll give him a shoot. That's fine. Let me get, let me get his, can I get his ID? Can I get his ID, bro? I don't want you none of that. Give me his ID, man. You still talking. Sam, your name ring bells in the street too, Sam. For a man that don't come outside. I just need his ID, bro. I need your license. He's on scene. He'll be here. I need his license. I need his license. You get it. Okay, so you got his ID or not? Yes or no? I have my ID. I have my ID. I have his ID. Okay, so I can start the paperwork. He said get back, Yeah. He said back up. Can I get his ID? Yeah, give me his You want me to give him your ID or yes? Hey, can you put him in the car, please? Because you're making too much noise. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. Let me get his ID, please. If he say yes. If he say, I need it to ID him. If, if he not, say yes, he's the, he's the that's one. That's I don't need it. I'll run him take all okay. night. Don't worry about it. You good, you good, you good, you good, you good, you good. You record it, bro. I'm about to go back and forth with you. What's the badge number, sir? It'll be on your arrest form. Wow, my arrest form? Yeah. I'm being arrested? Yeah, I told you that already. Don't ask. What's the arrest form? You can read it when you get the TGK. Not gonna let me call no one. You don't get a call till you get the TGK. It's not the movies. I'll talk to you. Yeah. Without him. Tell him to stay over there. So I'm gonna leave I get here. I'm actually going to a call. I deal with somebody that's actually possibly abducted. Right? This lady's OD. Right here on the sidewalk. This whole array of people. Everybody's out recording. Flag me down. I'm taking care of it. Right no problem. Here, we're working on her. Everybody's barking. It's 10 to 30. Yeah, we're working. Outside the yeah. store. Hey, is there anybody's car that's 10 to 30? Trying to ask to get cars out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Car parking lot. Because I always have. Okay. Just definitely. I know you. Never seen him a day in my life. That's my nephew. Okay. So, yeah. well, Don called me. Oh, who the fuck are you to be? Oh, 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 oh. Her? I don't know you. Now he's there. I'm looking at Sam. Yo, back up, get out of my face. They're still recording. I said, this is comical to you. Just ask him a question. Oh, you can't take my phone. I'm not touching your phone. But now the point that you're in my area, I'm telling you, bro, back up, walk off. Oh, I don't have to do anything for you. I'm not. Okay, that point is going on. Simple as that. I told him to back off. He did it. He got pushed, taken to the ground. He arrested. Tell me, simple misdemeanor. It's like she called me. I told her. I said, once he decides to calm down, there's that. I asked him for his ID. Oh, I'm not giving you shit. Okay. But I need his info so I can take care of this. We're already here now. We're here now. At the moment he walked up, it was over with. Okay, anyway, you can let him go? I can't because already everything's already happened. And then the whole thing, you go talk to him. He got a gas on it, a little small cut on his head. I guess we're going down to the ground. It's too far at that point. If I could have let him walk, we would have walked. At the point where Don called me, okay, I said, yeah, somebody was sent. That's why I said, when you got here, somebody was, give me somebody who was sent. But for him, it's gonna be a missing meter, it's gonna be light. You wanna get sent quarter now, they're gonna go clean him up, and he's gonna go. But it is what it is for this point. And he hasn't watched his mouth. I, I don't know who he is. But Davis, let me tell you something. Talk to me. Okay. Talk to me. I watched the video. Okay. You were aggressive with him. I was aggressive to him. You want me 
show you the tape. I, I can show the tape. I can show you the tape. You gonna take them? I'll take them out of the car in a minute. You have my number? 305. Does it have audio on the tape too? Okay. But now I gotta take it to Jackson. All right? I don't need that. They already got it. Hold on, I'm on my Call me so I have your number. Thank you, okay. Making sure you look good. No, no, he's fine. No, he's good. I look up. I see him approaching. Oh, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Jackson, who's your sergeant? Jackson? I mean, uh, Davis. Uh, Lindsay, he'll be here. You want him here? Okay. Hold on. Make sure you're sergeant. Get the sergeant out of the doctor. Let me tell you something. Okay. As far as I know, I know a lot of police officers and I'm good with everybody. Okay. Now, words, you should not put your hands on anybody when it comes to work. Now, look, look. Okay. I, saw you, you. I saw you snatch your hand the phone with the camera phone out of his hand. Okay. Where was the phone at? No, no. Where was the phone at originally? Right gonna talk. No, 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 no. No, it was not. Yeah, I, I, I can show you the camera. Right, I told you to send it to him. It was a video. That's fine. No. So at the point that I'm talking to, I'm no, recording. Put the phone out of my face. No. You guys, talk talk to to Davis. you guys escalated everything, I and mean, you beat the shit out of the kid. I and mean, look, you pushed him from there all the way to the yeah, middle of the thing. Him once. Hey, you showed him to you. Yeah, I'm heading that way now. Okay. I pushed him once. At the moment that I went to the ground, at the moment that I went to the ground, you after him and you grabbed him there and right. slammed him so to the ground, got, Davis. He got slammed. Yes, he did. Listen to me. I got on camera, man. And I was here. I got on camera. Well, you might not say you didn't slam. No, no. He got taken down. Slam is what to you. Picking up and slamming, right? He got taken down to the ground, sir. That's what happened. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something. Talk to me. Right now. Talk to me. Nothing personal. It's not personal. But you, when you guys attacked my nephew, it became personal. So now, listen. You, you, you to stick your name I'm going now. Now, let me tell you. The footage, I'm going to take. The footage, I'm going to take. Again, I'm going to take it. I'll make sure. I'll make sure it's investigated. Okay. Okay. You have that right completely. Okay. Mr. Gandor's uncle informs Officer Davis that he believed he used excessive force against his nephew, and that he would make sure it was investigated. As we have discussed many times before here on ATA, in order to determine whether force was excessive in violation of the Fourth Amendment, courts consider three factors outlined by the Supreme Court in the 1989 case of Graham v. Connor. Now quoting, the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. According to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Florida, in the 2022 case of Richmond v. Badia, courts in the circuit also consider, now quoting, the justification for the application of force, the relationship between the justification and the amount of force used, and the extent of any injury inflicted. In the Richmond case, the court went on to explain that, now quoting again, unprovoked force against a non-hostile and non-violent suspect who has not disobeyed instructions violates that suspect's rights under the Fourth Amendment, and that the absence of a legitimate law enforcement justification for using force is indicative of excessive force. In this situation, Officer Davis pushed Mr. Gandor backwards several feet and then threw him to the ground, resulting in injuries that, according to Mr. Gandor, required admission to the emergency room as well as additional medical treatment, and caused permanent damage, including head injuries and a chipped tooth. As there is no apparent justification for the force employed by Officer Davis, it is high Highly likely that a court would find this use of force to be constitutionally excessive. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. You're good. Me personally, Talk back in me. the day, me and you would have been going at it right now, right it when would, I pulled up. It wouldn't have happened that way. No, no, no. I'm telling you, me back no, in the day, it would have been. It would have gone like that. It would not be the first time. It's not back it would in not the day. It's not happening like that. Oh, that's what I'm telling you. So now I'm telling you, man to man. You can't walk up on an officer after I tell you to give me space and get out of my face. First of all, you can't keep walking up to me. Listen, you chose. You chose. Listen, no, 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 no. Listen, you chose to go after the two people. Go after the two that I knew. With sense, I didn't go after them. I came and talked to them. Why did everybody else was dealt with and went inside the gate? They were leaving. The only reason they came no, together was because he started cameras, barging. Right, Davis? You that's your Davis, you realize I got cameras. You do. We'll talk. Do your thing. I got you. Hey, whatever you got to do, go that route. I got you. Go that route. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm, no, no issue. 
No issue. Mr. Gandor was held in custody for over eight hours and was quote unquote unarrested and released at 4.45 a.m. the morning after his arrest. While Officer Davis intended to charge Mr. Gandor with disorderly conduct, despite previously telling him that he was under arrest for resisting, no charges were ever filed against him. In response to the incident, the Miami Police Department indicated that an internal affairs investigation was being conducted. However, the results of this investigation were not publicly released, and it is unclear whether Officer Davis was disciplined or if he is still employed by the Miami PD. On May 26, 2023, Mr. Gandor filed a federal civil rights lawsuit against Officer Davis, and on January 9, 2024, the court issued a decision denying Officer Davis qualified immunity on Mr. Gandor's claims for false arrest and excessive force. The case was dismissed on July 19, 2024, after the parties reached an undisclosed settlement agreement. Overall, Officer Davis gets an F for maintaining a belligerent and combative demeanor throughout the encounter, interfering with Mr. Gandor and his friend's First Amendment right to film the police, and using unprovoked, unnecessary, and excessive force against Mr. Gandor. Officer Davis's conduct in this altercation was violent, unprofessional, and dishonest, as he attempted to justify his actions by arguing that Mr. Gandor had laid hands on him when his own body camera footage clearly showed that he was not touched. I also question why Officer Davis kept his body camera camera muted for the initial portion of the encounter with Mr. Gandor, which allegedly formed the basis for the arrest, and given his behavior in the parts of the footage that do contain sound, I find the muting highly suspicious. Officer Davis also made several baseless claims about Mr. Gandor, his business, and his family, characterizing Mr. Gandor as a criminal with absolutely no evidence or merit to his statements. Officer Davis's conduct was objectively wrong on almost every level, and I hope other officers can use this interaction as an example of what not to do when interacting with members of the public. Mr. Gandor gets an A, because although he did seem to be engaged in a heated argument with Officer Davis during the muted portion of the body camera footage, he did not physically escalate the encounter, generally complied with officer commands, and took appropriate legal action after his wrongful arrest. At no point did Mr. Gandor do anything that warranted Officer Davis's response, and it is impressive that Mr. Gandor managed to stay so composed after enduring the officer's use of force. I commend Mr. Gandor for his tenacity and his commitment to his rights, and I hope that he is able to find some peace and fully recover from this altercation now that his court case has been resolved. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.